Welcome to Talk World Radio, a half-hour discussion of politics as if the people mattered. I'm David Swanson. This week on Talk World Radio, we are talking about an upcoming conference about neutrality and what that means and why we should have it. Gabriel Aguirre is Latin America organizer for World Beyond War. He is from Venezuela and is currently based in Bogota, Colombia. He has been an activist and advocate for peace, social justice, and international solidarity and human rights, and has more than 13 years of experience in social and community work. He is one of the planners of a neutrality Congress planned for April 4th to 7th in Bogota and online in Spanish and in English. People can sign up and attend uh, to attend in person or online at worldbeyondwar.org. Gabriel Aguirre, welcome to Talk World Radio. Yeah, thank you so much, David. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure, uh, this great opportunity to share with every people and to talk about a little bit about the Australian Congress. Uh, thanks for coming on. Can you tell us something about uh, neutrality and the Neutrality Congress? Yeah, of course. Well, first of all, uh, thank you for the opportunity to join on uh, in, this, in this important space of communication that every week gives us the opportunity to hear uh, about the current affairs of the world and the work of activists uh, who want to end all war and build uh, at a war of peace with social justice. Uh, well, the idea of this Neutrality Congress uh, emerged uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, this is an initiative that some movements and organizations of veterans, especially involved uh, in the global peace movement, and of course, uh, among which has been involved War Beyond War, Veterans, Global Peace Network, Veteran for Peace, Cabilando, International Peace Bureau, Transnational Institute, and many, many universities here in Colombia, uh, and who consider it the, the need to build a space for the reflections and exchange uh, of ideas and opinions uh, on a concept globally debate uh, as neutrality. Uh, since then, several meetings and contacts have been held to, to look into the possibility of holding this meeting in person, uh, which could have a great impact, both nationally and internationally. Um, finally, after exploring so many possibilities, uh, a roadmap was agreed upon to, to be able to carry out this Congress and today we can say that from April 4 to 7, we will hold uh, this first neutrality Congress in Bogota in Colombia. It's important to say that because this is the, the first um, edition of the neutrality Congress. And something that is very important to mention, David, uh, is that in this Congress, uh, we wanted to listen to different voices of personalities uh, who have played an important role in the foreign policy of the states. Uh, we also wanted uh, to incorporate the voice of the people who come from the, uh, the university, from the academia, and of course, who are from the organizations and the grassroots social movements, and of course, people that have uh, important role in, in the state, etc., who develop uh, an intensive activist agenda uh, precisely to stop the militaries and arts magnets in the world. And, okay, we who participated uh, in this organizing team want to provide a collective space to listen to all the voices on the importance of neutrality, uh, not as a form of inactions in the face uh, of the horrors of war, but as being as a channel uh, to, as the slogan says uh, of this Congress, like build a global stabilization strategy, strategy uh, in a war, of course, with a very dangerous dynamic that put us 
that the gaze of the new world were. So for people who don't know what neutrality means exactly, um, correct me if I'm wrong, it doesn't mean that a government is indifferent to the world or shut off from the world. It means that it doesn't sign on to a military alliance or make itself part of an empire, but doesn't want to be an enemy either, wants to stay neutral and, and out of uh, out of wars that it doesn't have any interest in being in. Is that is that basically what neutrality is? Well, the 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 main concept of the neutrality is try to take the, the countries and of course the, the military alliance don't take part in the conflict in the military conflict around the world because as we know we are in a volatile world where the madness prevails uh, over reasons where the desire to control a strategic resource new markers uh, labor force and thus extend uh, the geopolitical domain and try to impose a single truth uh, put us at, at gaze as i mentioned before uh, of a war conflagrations uh, whose destructive whose destructive capacities uh, are at least seven times greater than the destructive capacity of the countries in a second world, world war. If we take a brief look at the world, we will see that the military conflicts between countries are developing in every corner of the world, among which we mentioned, of course, the war in Ukraine and Russia, where the NATO has played in a very active role in promoting and escalating the conflict and where the situation of the people in, U in Ukraine is deteriorating more and more and demands the need to advance in a political and negotiated solutions to put an end to this war. Similarly, we must not fail to mention the current genocide that is, uh, is occurring in the Gaza Strip where today, uh, today there are more than 30,000 people's death, 30,000 death so far, with countless people who have been displaced and truly dramatic humanitarian situation and where the international community and the UN has not been able to push for a ceasefire. And contrary to this, the countries of the European Union, Canada and the United States and many more continue to send billions of dollars to continue the pain in the war and death in Palestine. Now, these are perhaps only some of the most complex contexts, but the great reality is that there are multiple developments of war and violence on a local scale uh, as is happening in Africa, in Asia, and in some parts of Latin American regions. On the other hand, and we, we are facing process of advancement and expansion of NATO countries that privilege assume, for example, the neutrality, as in the case of Sweden, who today has abandoned exposition of the neutrality. Also countries like Finland, have decided to join to the instruments that we have mentioned is the finger on the trigger of the imperial, like the night. So this is a, an important debate. Of course, we know that it is, is not the only, only, only one answer to resolve the problem of the militaries and of course and, and the problem of the war in, around the world, but it's a channel, it's, it's an option, it's, it's, it's an alternative to try to to do this the, the debate. Well, I'm I'm looking forward, Gabriel Aguirre, to joining you in Bogota at this Congress. And I know there will be people from around the world, but there will be a number of speakers from Latin America. What is what is the situation regarding neutrality now in Latin America? Yeah, this is an important question and thanks for that. And uh, the truth is that this Congress has not only invited uh, speakers from Latin America. In fact, 
will have more than 50 speakers uh, from the five continents around the world. Of course, not all the, the, the countries, but the five continents. We think that this issue of the neutrality is a discussion that should be of interest to all countries in all parts of the world, because the problem of war is not limited to just one region of the world. Clearly, being the Congress in Colombia, there is a greater number of participants from this region of the world, and it's a topic that arouses particular interest because in recent times, uh, a process of militarization uh, has been developing in the continent uh, through the military uh, presence uh, of the United States throughout the, the continent um, with the more, uh, more than 70 military bases, many of which uh, can be found uh, in the War Beyond War map of militaries, which has uh, also served uh, as a source for research and development of various work of organizations and individuals' uh, interest in progress of the militaries uh, in the war. So uh, I invite to all people to console our website and check the map of, of militaries. But I was mentioning uh, that part of this increase in the military presence of the United States uh, in the continent is reflecting uh, in the actions of the Southern Command, South Commander, uh, which should today direct the foreign policy of the United States towards the continent. We have all seen the statements of the, com gen the Commander General uh, of the South Commander, Laura Richardson, on multiple occasions where she has reiterated that the Latin American is of vital importance for the foreign policy of the United States. Everything uh, and every people know that the, the importance of the Latin American is especially the, the many resources that are in, in this country, in this continent. Last year, more than more than 1,200 US military troops entering Peruvian territory. This year, there has also been a significant deployment of a special force, including the CIA and the FBI, and of course, the military troops of the US in Ecuador, under the excuse of fighting uh, the drug trafficking and criminal gangs in the country. This is if we see it connecting to exist military bases in Colombia, we can speak of a militarization of the Andean and Dina regions of the continent. Faced with this and the dis dispute, the enormous resource that exists in Latin America is very relevant to maintain the proclaim of the Latin American as of peace, the, like the proclaim was made by the CELAC in 2004, perhaps one of the ways that can serve for this is precisely promote the neutrality. Of course, there are countries in the continent that assume the neutrality in face of military conflicts in the world, as Costa Rica, as the Canal of Panama, of course, uh, an imperfect neutrality. But even though it's in perfect neutrality, it's trying to shame a positions of belligerence uh, and to take sides in the war. The last Friday, 2022 20, on Mars, the head of the South Commander visited Costa Rica. And of course, we think with the interest of progress, it's changing this this position of Costa Rica and promoting the positions to take part in the military conflicts in the in the in, in the continent. So, this is a, a short answer about this, uh, David. We should, uh, Gabriel. We should probably inform listeners in the United States, if not in the rest of the world, because some of them may not know 
that the US military has divided up the globe into various commands. And one of them is called the Southern Command. Uh, and it is simply a part of the US military. Uh, it's not the US Congress, it's not the State Department, uh, but if it's setting policy in Latin America, that's a military policy. And maybe not everybody knows that Costa Rica abolished its military uh, in the 1940s and that the United States military would, of course, like to undo that uh, and have a Costa Rican military um, aligned with it. Um, I, I, I think that one sign of neutrality being alive and well in Latin America, Gabriel, tell me if I'm wrong, is that when the United States demanded that every country support the war in Ukraine, uh, a, a lot of a lot of countries said no. We we don't support either side of the war in Ukraine. Am, am I right about that? Yeah, yeah, it's true. Uh, well, this is a, of course this is an important step of the countries in Latin America because in this special in especially in this conflict. Many, many countries in Latin America says, no, we will not support a war. And of course, we will not support uh, this madness to go to kill more people in Ukraine. Um, I was uh, thinking that the, uh, the last week, uh, the two last week, two, um, yeah, two, two, weeks, two weeks ago, uh, Ecuador, uh, send a message to to United States because they are trying to to change uh, the arms from Russia. Uh, a cambio, yeah. of they course, to get, to get rid of Russian weapons and get in U.S. weapons. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. So, and um, finally, Ecuador says we will not uh, change. Uh, we will not deliver our arms and our military equipment uh, to you, and of course we will not involve in this in in this madness in in Ukraine. And of course this is a, a, a good position. Um, and I want to mention uh, another issues because, uh, for example, in the case of the Palestine, many countries in Latin America also don't want to take part. Uh, of this conference and of course they are uh, doing many solidarity activities and of course the proposal is try to to invoke uh, an international peace conference to try to put a cease to to demand a ceasefire and of course to put end to to this uh, war in Ukraine and in Palestine and every corner around the world. And of course, uh, most nations in the world are using the United Nations to try to get a ceasefire, but there's the US veto in the way. Why, why Gabriel Aguirre choose Colombia in particular uh, as the nation to, to hold this first Congress on neutrality? Yeah, thank you for your question, David, because many might think that choosing Colombia is a sort of chance, and the reality is that it has a reasons to be. Uh, one of the countries of the continent that invest more uh, in its military industry uh, is Colombia. Its relations with other military powers uh, in the world, such as the United States and Israel, uh, have generated concert in the continent for many years. Uh, it's also important to mention that Colombia has lived for more than 70 years uh, in a context of war and internal violence uh, with confrontation between the state and various belligerent forces. Uh, this has given combat uh, experience to its military force that other armies in the continent do not have. Uh, in, in the recent years, uh, there, are a, there is an expression like the, something like that, that Colombia is the Israel in Latin America. We must add that in Colombia, there are nine of the US military bases 
from which special operations are directed within the territory and which have also been the subject of the many complaints by the Colombian populations and other neighboring countries, which have demanded on several occasions the closures of the military bases. Uh, on the other hand, we have to add that the Colombia is a global partner of the NATO, a feature somewhat uh, difficult to define precisely because the countries that make uh, NATO are supposed to be part of the Atlantic Treaty. But it's yeah. clear that the strategy, the strategy that has been used is precisely to justify the presence of NATO in the continent, which in addition to having Colombia as a partner has military bases in the Caribbean. Uh, last but not less, uh, we must mention that Colombia is going through several peace process, some unfinished, uh, on others in development, and this Congress can provide a great impetus for the Colombian society, a great promotion to the Colombian society to carry out a deep discussions on the meaning of the militarizations of all spheres of the civil society, the challenge that the peace processes are going throughout, and the need to achieve of a real peace with social justice. So this Congress should serve for an internal advance in the countries that are advancing in their way to build a, of a better society outside the militaries and the armament magnets in the world. And we are fully convinced that it will serve Colombia and, which, and will launch a very strong message to the world not to be part of the military confrontation, not to stop new confrontations and to work in a building peace. It seems confusing to me and maybe to some other people that Colombia has so many US bases. It's the only NATO partner in Latin America. It works with the US military, does NATO military drills supposedly to benefit the environment. I have no idea how that works. But has the president of the country making the best anti-war speeches, the best pro-peace speeches, denouncing the U.S. military, denouncing U.S. wars? Something strange there, right? Yeah, sure. Well, uh, I want to mention uh, about that. And of course, thank you for this this, this question. Of course, of course, this is a, you, you could think that it's a contradiction. Because, of course, you have an international speech to try to disbestment the military and to try to find the, the International Conference for Peace in Ukraine, in Palestine, etc. But internal, the internal situation is, is very different. Of course, we need to understand that the, this is a, a coalition government with many forces. Some of them are interested to maintain the military bases and to to don't discuss this problem uh, and of course to try to, to don't find a solutions to this problem and maintain the relationships with Israel, maintain the relationships with uh, United States. But I, I want to tell you something important. Uh, two years, two, um, two months ago, the South Commander Laura Richardson was visiting Colombia and she have a meeting with the president of the war and with the president of the country, sorry, um, uh, Petro, Gustavo Petro. And in this meeting, they, they are discussing, okay, uh, we are here, like a psycho, South commander. What do you need uh, in Colombia? Uh, we will have many peoples to, to go to the different parts with conflict, etc. And the response for the for the president of the country in, in that meeting that was in uh, publicity in TV was something like that. Okay, we celebrate your presence here. 
I'm very pleasure for your uh, for your for this meeting. Uh, and we have many problems, for example, in the in the outside area with, with Bogota, with the fire in the in the jungle, in the in, in the difficult areas. So I know that the South Commander have many helicopters and many uh, equipment to uh, to put uh, end to this fire in, in, in the middle of the jungle. If you want to help to Colombia, please send us the helicopters with the, with water to try to uh, to solve this problem in the ambientalist. So, of course, there are uh, many issues to to solve. Of course, um, will not depend of, of course of the social movements of, of our organization. Depends of the the situation of the government, but it's important to. Uh, and one one aspect to mention is important. This Congress is to try to put these issues in discussions in the country, and of course, this Congress will be in the uh, in the place in the venue of the Congress of the Republic of Colombia, that the peoples try to discuss uh, many uh, love uh, projects to uh, close the military bases to go out of the NATO in the country. We have many, many aspects to discuss and of course to try to push the government in assume uh, a more strong positions in that way. Gabriela, I've asked too many questions. We have about two minutes left. Uh, what do you hope uh, that this Congress will contribute to getting us toward a world beyond war? And and how can people learn more and get involved and attend? Yeah, okay. The first thing we must ratify is that we need to work in the construction of a world beyond war. Now, there are many alternatives to build. It, even we cannot say that there is only one of way. What we are sure of our what we can affirm is that it seems tremendously important to stop the military and armament to control the budget. Uh, that is uh, allocated to military spending to invest the this social uh, resource problems that are important for humanity problems such as uh, hunger, health, education, housing, culture, and other basic rights that every human being should enjoy. Uh, I think we are in a particular moment where we either decide to take a position of this or that side. And that means agreeing with war and death of a millions of the human rights beings, or we assume the collecting commitment to seek a different path, path that lead us to a resolution and management of conflicts without resorting to violence or to war. It's necessary that the war is not choice, it's not auction. And of course, uh, we have made an effort to to give a great discussion of this event. Of this event, this interview is just part of that effort. And of course, I want to say thank you for for the, uh, in, for inviting me to participate. Uh, okay, the, there is an an email where the the people can be in contact with the organizing committee of the event and from their established working relationships for the future, allowing allowing us to continue working in this important field. Uh, so I invite all the people uh, interested in this Congress to join, uh, support, support us in spreading the, this event, build networks in their countries to work for the neutrality as a channel to stop war and build a war beyond war. Gabriela Guire, Latin America organizer for World Beyond War. People can uh, sign up to see or, or to go to and attend the Neutrality Congress at worldbeyondwar.org. Uh, Gabriel, thank you very much for coming on Talk World Radio. Thank you so much, David. This is Talk World Radio. I'm David Swanson. Take action at rootsaction.org. Help end war at worldbeyondwar.org. 
Read or listen to today's Peace Almanac entry at peacealmanac.org. All past shows can be heard at talkworldradio.org. Talk World Radio is produced in Charlottesville, Virginia, and syndicated by Pacifica Network. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way.